Welcome to the Ultimate Life Television Program, brought to you by Pastor Gracia Selassie Awie of Treasure House ICGC, where you are treasured and not trashed. Welcome to the Ultimate Life Broadcast. I'm your host, Gracia Selassie Awie, Pastor of Treasure House ICGC. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. It's life above the ordinary. It's called the ultimate life. On this program, you are presented with a blueprint for the ultimate life. So expect to be changed, expect to grow, expect the ultimate life. My subject today is making wise decisions. Our future is determined by the choices we make today. Can you imagine the amount of choices we have before us? Lots of them job, school, dinner, stocks, real estate, friendship, choices of um, a life partner, the list goes on. Someone said, we make our decisions and then our decisions make us. Life is largely made up of choices and success in life is largely making wise choices. Your life is a product of the choices you make. Not that your father made, not that your mother made, unless I'm going to make the same ones. If you don't like the results of their life, you are going to have to make different choices. And so we get the credible power to choose. God gave us the gift of choice. It's a privilege. All the other creative things of God don't have that. He's giving them instincts, genetic responses, survival tendencies, and a drive to uh, propagate their species. It's only those he created in his image who have the privilege of choice. He gave it to us, but we misused it along the way to destroy our own future. There's a Jewish saying that goes like this. We get too quick old and too late smart. How many of you know sometimes in your life you can regret the decisions you make and in the end you think, what was wrong with me? Why was I so stupid? I want to encourage you today to glean some principles from uh, this message so that you can make some wise decisions in your life. Success and raising a family and having a fruitful life is not an accident. It comes by making uh, wise decisions. When you draw the wrong conclusions about life and you blame people uh, for your lack of success, you miss out on the important dimension of making wise decisions. There's a book I read called uh, Elephants in the Church and it's written by a guy called George, B George Bloomer. He has done a tremendous work of the book. He talks about the big issues in the world today and how the church needs to address them. I, I want to quote to you what he says here because the greatest danger in life is to blame other people for your lack of success when actually your lack of success is because of your decisions. Everything in life is about decisions. Every day uh, you wake up, decis decision needs, uh, decisions need to be made how uh, you are going to style your hair. If you're a lady, are you going to brush your teeth? Are you going to wear a jacket or a waistcoat? Uh, are you going to uh, put on trousers or, or a skirt? Ladies, uh, which, which route are you going to take? What are you going to eat until you go to bed? And then the time you choose to go to bed. So it's decisions, decisions, decisions. And George Bloomer talks about how important it is to focus on decisions and not to blame shift, which is what our world does. He says that there's a popular notion that poverty is caused by racism. And since racism exists in America, the chances of curing poverty for black people is nil. This is a fallacy and it's not the truth. In fact, African-American women who have uh, uh, studied in university earn more money than their white uh, counterparts in America. He then quotes a man called William Galston. He was a former policy advisor to uh, President Clinton. He says this, 
in order to avoid being poor, you have to do three things. Number one, you have to finish high school. Number two, you have to wait until you are married before you have children. And number three, you have to wait at least until age 20 before having children once married. Only 8% of people who do this are poor compared to 79% of those who do this and succeed. It seems racism is a minor cause of poverty, whereas bad decisions are a primary cause. Basic good decisions while you are young lead to success. How many of you know this is an extremely important area and we don't, we don't make wise decisions? Making wise decisions is not common even to wise people. Solomon didn't make wise decisions. Why is it that Christians don't make wise decisions? And how can we prevent ourselves from making stupid decisions? I hope to give you some principles today to help you think along uh, the right lines because when you have the ability to make good decisions, it will separate you from average people. It separates good leaders from great leaders. It separates average parents from great parents and it separates failing people from successful people. So let's look at the hindrances to making uh, wise decisions. And what, what, what I want you to do is that I want you to examine your life as, as um, we discuss these things and see how uh, it applies to you. So let me give you some hindrances today that prevent us from making wise decisions. The first one is pride. People have pride in their lives. That's why they don't make wise decisions. They think they are clever enough at some point. And so they stop asking for advice and seeking counsel. Solomon made some dumb decisions in his life. That's why he writes the book of Proverbs and advises his son to seek wisdom. And when you get to a place where uh, you think you've arrived, you don't need to ask advice. For some people, it starts when they are 12. For others, it happens at 20. They kind of imagine, well, I'm 20. I'm 21 now. Also, other people get to 30 and it's like, I'm not a child anymore. I'm still learning. That's why I, I, I travel to conferences and still uh, read a lot. I, I listen to podcasts. I've got uh, mentors that I, I um, what, what do you call it, read them, their materials and, 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 and listen to them. It, it's because you can never get to the place where you are immune from uh, dumb decisions. Jack Canfield, in his book, The Success Principle, How to Get from Where uh, You Are to Where You Want to Be. This is what he said. He said, people who have more information have a tremendous advantage over people who don't. He goes on to say, and though you may think it takes years to acquire the knowledge, you will need to become super successful, the truth is that simple behavior such as reading an hour a day, turning television time into learning time, and attending classes and training programs can make it surprisingly easy to increase your knowledge and automatically increase your level of success. He said, uh, the reality is that the average American watches television six hours a day. If you are one of the average folks, by the time you are 60 years old, you will have wasted 15 years of your life watching television. That's one fourth of your life. Do you really want to spend one fourth of your life watching other people and the ones on television who are uh, working, getting rich, living out their dreams while you are vegetating? And every situation you face in life is different because the world is changing. Look at what scripture says in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5. Let the wise hear an increase in learning, and the one who understands obtain uh, guidance. Isn't it strange that... Uh, 
he says, let those who have understanding obtain guidance. If you have understanding, why do you need to get guidance? Because you never have enough. Proverbs chapter 19, Proverbs 19, verse 20. Listen to advice and accept discipline. And at the end, you'll be counted among the wise. At the end. That doesn't mean when you get to 18 or 19 or 20 or 30. It means when you die. At the end of your life and career, you'll be counted among the wise. Some people want to be counted among the wise when they are in their 20s. No, it's when your whole life is over. It will be determined whether you were really wise or if you just did some great things on the way. I want to be counted as wise when I go to the grave. Not, not just having a couple of wise decisions, but living a wise life that benefited others. The next point is underestimating emotionally charged atmospheres. Understanding emotionally charged atmospheres. Many of us find ourselves in emotionally charged atmospheres and we, are, we, we underestimate the impact of those atmospheres on our decision making. Do you know that when you are in an emotionally charged atmosphere, it exaggerates the good things and it exaggerates the bad things? When you are in a tensed atmosphere that's emotionally charged, things can look worse than they are or they can look better than they are. And if you make decisions when you are in an emotionally charged atmosphere with emotionally charged people, chances are you are going to make some bad decisions in your life people make bad business decisions in emotionally charged sales atmospheres and they make bad decisions about their relationships that they begin because they are in a partying environment a partying environment is an emotionally charged atmosphere oh i think she's she's the one for me bad 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 decision the decisions we are likely to regret the most are the ones we make in an emotionally charged atmosphere. When you're at a party, eating out with friends, and there's a vibe going on, and the girls are looking, and your hormones are raging, don't underestimate the impact on your brain. And you need to pause and think more carefully. Never rush. The bigger the decision, the more time is needed. Be careful of movies. Because in movies, they see each other across the room. The next time, they are tearing their clothes off. When you meet someone in the next minute, you are completely naked with them. Uh, you've got to be very careful of emotionally charged atmospheres. Especially when you're buying stuff. Oh, they tell you the offer expires now. Uh, you are one of the last people to get in. The next point is we are driven to go it alone. Society is kind of pressurizing us to go it alone, to go with our heart and to do whatever we feel. But sometimes we need advice. And I reckon that the most dangerous place that you can get to in your life is when you are in uh, the 35 plus category because you've lived long enough to gain some fair measure of experience. But when you are older, you realize uh, it's still not enough. When you are in your 20s, you go, I'm still learning, you know. You've got a humility about you, but you've got a confidence. But when you get to 30, you are like, I'm getting there, you know. I'm, I'm no longer uh, 20 something. I don't hang out with those people anymore. You feel like you are in the next league. Then you get to 35, 36. You are like, I'm, I'm heading towards 40. And you start to get an opinion about yourself that can put you in jeopardy. Because if you think you know it all, you go it alone. And you could end up in disaster. And the biggest mistake or the biggest mistakes are made in that age group with marriages, purchases of homes, cars, the list goes on. And that's the most debt ridden age group, 35 to 45. And so we need to be careful here 
when we are driven to go it alone because we've got some experience but we haven't got enough experience let me give you a thought the wise man knows his limitations the fool believes he has none never believe you have no limitations we all have limitations no matter how old we are and so when making decisions we need to pause for a moment and say am i running ahead here on my own or do i need to consult and consulting does not mean you are weak it actually means you are wise proverbs chapter 12 proverbs chapter 12 verse 15 the way of fools seems right to them but the wise listen to advice the way of fools seems right to them but the wise listen to advice think about that if you are wise why would you listen to advice because you need advice but fools go it alone proverbs 18 verse 1 he who separates himself seeks his own desire he quarrels against all sound wisdom in other words he's got his own agenda he doesn't want you to interrupt him proverbs 11 verse 14 where there is no guidance the people fall but in abundance of counselors there is victory so get advice don't go it alone the next point is not enough evaluation of the implications when you make a decision you need to evaluate the implications of your decision you need to write a list of good points and bad points sometimes you can do it in your mind but often the bigger the decision you should do it on paper or tablet or your phone you should ask yourself some key uh, questions thought is required when you make decisions you shouldn't make decisions on instinct instinct is what animals live by but men led by principles and sometimes uh, a principle goes against what we feel sometimes the outcome of our decision shocks us but it's because we haven't thought through the implications Andy Stanley uh, the pastor um, is written an excellent book on uh, decision making called ask it and I find it fascinating uh, in the way he phrased a question that has become a life question that he asks people in his church he says it's a question that makes it easy to determine uh, the answer to every other question uh, in your life and this is the question you, you, you can you can write this down in the light of my past experiences present circumstances and future hopes and dreams what is the wise thing to do i'll give it to you again in the light of my past experiences present circumstances and future hopes and dreams what is the wise thing to do so where i have come from and what god has done in my life and who he's been in my life and where i currently find myself standing and what i want god to do with me in the future in the light of all that should I take off my clothes and have unprotected sex? This question answers everything in your life if you are humble enough to respond uh, to it. The next point is not really knowing what the rules of life are. We think that the rules of life when it comes to marriage, relationships and spiritual matters are completely different to the other rules of life how many of you know life is God's rules and principles but do you know how many christians believe they can live outside those think of any field of endeavor uh, mathematics engineering uh, science architecture they all have rules 
you can't just draw any old thing and then build and then go check that out there are certain rules regarding engineering if you break those rules there are consequences so if there are rules in maths and science and biology in in any field of endeavor why is it that we don't realize there are rules concerning relationships there are rules concerning money and spiritual matters do we think we can just make that decision and escape the consequences like we are not living in the real world there's ordinary people then there's me and people make decisions and then they are shocked why did the lord do that no the lord didn't do it you just broke the laws of life if you like drive up the wrong side of the road long enough and you have a head-on collision majority of people will avoid you but eventually someone won't see you and you will die it is not the lord who did it you did not know how life works when it comes to money christians think we can just uh, bypass these things larry uh, Barkett is an author on finance and he's written tremendous books one of the books is written is called the complete financial guide for young couples he says this in his book he tells of a young couple who wanted to buy a house but they felt the house was too expensive for them they couldn't afford it so they told the lord this if you want us to buy it number one have the contractor accept only half of what he's asking for the deposit and number two have the bank approve of our loan both events happened and they bought the house but as soon as they began to move into the house they got into debt they now had a problem what do we do now since god directed them to do this how many of you know the rules of spending exist you can't spend more than comes in even if you're a christian if you spend more than is coming in no matter how you spiritualize it and the lord showed me and we asked him you make bad decisions and sometimes because it's quoted in a spiritual thing we are not living we are not living in the in the real world we are not living in the real world and let me say this to you if if you are if you are um, married you need to have a, a budget as a family it's very important you need to know what is coming in what your expenditure is and what your surplus it's very important you must have a budget as a family anyway let me give you some tips on uh wise decision making wise people know what they don't know do you know what you don't know i'm asking you a question do you know what you don't know wise people know what they don't know and they are not afraid to uh, go to those who do know don't act smarter than you are if you are wise you ask for advice it almost seems like it doesn't make sense well if i'm wise why do i need to ask for advice that's how you keep being wise and that's how you keep getting wiser and people end up making wise decisions in areas that aren't their expertise because they've got expertise from others if you're listening to me today and you haven't handed over ownership of your life to christ I want you to know that it's a very very important decision you need to make there are two decisions we make in life giving our lives to Christ who we marry and this is a, this is the number one decision you need to make you need to decide to give your life to Christ and I want to encourage you to do that because it pays I'm going to pray a simple prayer with you it's your prayer I'm going to give you the words you are the heart to it and I want you to pray it sincerely from the depths of your heart. Say this after me. Say, Father, today, thank you for your word. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for me. I recognize that I'm a sinner who needs a savior. Forgive me of all my sins. Have mercy on me. I believe with all my heart that you died for me and you rose again. And with my mouth, I confess your lordship over my life. Come into my life. Be my Lord be my savior 
Help me live for you all the days of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. If you pray this simple prayer, I want to know you are saved, you are born again, you are now a child of God. Welcome into God's family. Heaven is celebrating, heaven is rejoicing because of this decision that you have made. And hey, I trust that today's message has been uh, a blessing to you. I want to say a big thank you to you for tuning into this broadcast because you could, you could have used your time for anything else, but you decided, you chose to listen to me. And I want to say a big thank you to you today. But before I sign up, I want you to always remember that if you want to have a life that's going to be as abundant as possible without chaos and confusion, don't do it any other way. Do it according to God's way. God bless you and you have yourself a great day. Thank you for watching the Ultimate Life Television program. We hope you have been blessed by the teaching. Tune in to our next program on the same channel and the same time next week. You are cordially invited to visit Treasure House ICGC for our Sunday morning church services at the New Horizon Center, South Lodge Avenue, adjacent to the Pollard's Hill Library, CR41LT. For ministry products and other information, please contact us on 0208-355-3461 or send an email to pastor at treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. You may also visit our website www.treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. Our service times are as follows, Sunday 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. and Wednesday 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. You can also download our ministry app, Gracious Awaye, to listen to Pastor Gray's messages from the Apple Store or Google Play Store. May God richly bless you.